The Build Better More Infrastructure Agenda of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. was an adaptation of the previous administration's Build 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 program. These infrastructure initiatives were the Philippines government's centerpiece program to usher the Philippines into its golden age of infrastructure. This intends to bridge the country's decades of infrastructure gap, which has long been identified as a major factor for the high cost of doing business in the country, which curtails the nation's growth potential. The program also aims to encourage investments, facilitate job creation, boost economic growth, and improve the quality of life across the country. With these in mind, the Philippine governments create a doable long-term integrated infrastructure development for Mega Manila, using transport as the catalyst for sustainable development. Aims to provide solutions to traffic congestion and to enhance connectivity within Mega Manila. Dubbed as the crown jewel of the Philippine mass transportation system, the Metro Manila subway project construction is well underway. The tunneling works for the project crossed its point of no return this past January, and with it, the digging has been non-stop since. The completion of the Metro Manila subway project, billed as the project of the century, has been moved anew, according to the announcement made by the Philippines Department of Transportation. DOTR said it aims to complete the construction of the project in 2028, or before the end of the Marcos administration, and to open the subway to the public by 2029. The agency has scrapped its plan to partially operate Balenzula, Tondong Sora, and North Avenue stations in 2027. The subway project will cost the Philippines government up to 488.5 billion pesos or around $10 billion. The Japan International Cooperation Agency is set to fund 76% of the project via a 370.8 billion pesos loan package. The remaining 24% of the project cost, amounting to 117.7 billion pesos, will be paid for by the Philippine government. This is one of the most expensive rail projects in Southeast Asia. After Singapore's Cross Island Line, Malaysia's East Coast Rail Link, and the other Philippines rail project North-South Commuter Railway. The Metro Manila subway is way more expensive compared to China's BRI project of Indonesia, the Jakarta to Bandung high-speed rail. This will be one of the few fully underground rail lines in Southeast Asia, the other lines are in Singapore. The Department of Transportation last week showed for the first time the progress of the construction of the Metro Manila subway system. The 200 meters of the subway's southbound lane have already been constructed from the Valenzuela depot since the tunnel boring machine started digging in January. The groundbreaking for the MMSP or the Metro Manila subway project happened in 2019 with major construction with the tunnel boring machines having been started in 2022. The idea of building a Metro Manila subway started to materialize on January 2023, as President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. led the launching of the tunnel boring machine in Valenzuela City after his father, former President Ferdinand Marcos Sr., conceptualized it several decades ago. Launching this tunnel boring machine is a testament to this administration's commitment to continue the project of the previous administration and more importantly to build better infrastructure across the country. With the deployment of the tunnel boring machine, actual construction for Metro Manila subway will commence, as it will set the operation in motion and initiate its movement for excavation. This also signifies the Department of Transportation's point of no return to complete the country's first ever underground railway system. The Metro Manila subway will leverage Japanese technology to make the structure flood and earthquake proof. The subway was designed in a similar way to Japan's existing railway system. The excavation between Valenzuela and Quirino highway stations are expected to be completed by December 2023 or January 2024. Transport officials last week showed the progress of the Metro Manila subway project in Valenzuela. The 33-kilometer underground rail is 33% complete. Underground works for the Metro Manila subway project is now expected to be operational by 2028, which can facilitate the drilling of 10 meters of tunnels per day. A total of 25 TBMs, which can dig up to 380 cubic meters of soil, will be used for the project. With its sheer size and power, the subway's TBMs are designed to make the process of tunneling faster, while significantly reducing above-ground disruption during construction 
noting that the agency had massive rotating cutting wheels that can break up hard soil and rocks easily. A total of 25 TBMs, manufactured by JIM Technology Corporation in Surumi, Kanagawa Prefecture, Japan, will be used for the entire subway project. The MMSP will now have 17 stations spanning from Valenzuela City to FTI Intermodal Terminal in Piranyaki, with a spur line that connects to Naya Terminal 3 in Pasay and will cover a distance of 33 kilometers. Metro Manila Subway will use the One Sustina product brand name for the next generation stainless steel train cars, featuring higher energy conservation, enhanced safety, and high maintainability. This brand has been adopted by multiple railway lines including the Yamanote line operated by East Japan Railway Company. The entire line will use 240 train cars, or 8 cars for 30 train sets, and will be manufactured and supplied by JTREK and Sumitomo Corporation, the leading train car manufacturer in Japan. Japan's assistance, through a variety of ODA support, will provide the Philippines government funds to build this quality infrastructure utilizing Japan's 27,000 km railway experience, and broad knowledge gained through the years. Based on feasibility studies, the subway will reduce travel time between Valenzuela City and Ninoy Aquino International Airport Terminal 3, from 1 hour and 10 minutes to just 41 minutes, serving an estimated 519,000 passengers daily. The Metro Manila subway will connect around Metro Manila, spanning seven cities, municipalities, and three business districts. It will also connect to the existing rail lines of MRT-3, the LRT-2, and upcoming lines of MRT-7, Makati Subway, and North-South Commuter Railways. Along with the MMSP, the Philippine Railway Institute will also be created. This will be a totally new means of public transport and infrastructure. Seeing as it will be the first in the Philippines, part of the project is the creation of the Philippine Railway Institute. The institute will serve as the planning, implementing, and regulating agency for human resources development, and as a research and training center, not just for the Metro Manila subway project, but eventually, for the entire railway sector of the country. Infrastructure development is the backbone of economic progress. It plays a critical role in society and the economy by providing services to households and industries. As the Philippines transition from low middle income to high middle income this year, the countries have to move on, to higher quality and more sophisticated infrastructure like railways, subways, world-class international airports, telecom facilities, and renewable energy. These infrastructure projects have decongested roads and have made life better for commuters. This results in better productivity of workers, more effective and efficient exchange of products and services between consumers and businesses, and enhanced accessibility of key business districts throughout the country. According to the comprehensive report issued by Japan International Cooperation Agency, the Philippines is losing 3.5 billion pesos a day due to traffic congestion in Metro Manila alone. Also, traffic costs in Bulacan, Laguna, Cavite and Rizal had also reached 2.3 billion pesos a day in 2017. The government is looking into policies and modes of transport like the railway to help cut losses. New open expressways, bridges, airports, and additional rail lines will help decongest roads and in turn, will cut the cost of transportation and save time on the road.